Hey guys, welcome back to Maple Serve Tech. I'm Rick, and today we're going to be comparing 12 different brands of thermal paste to figure out if there's actually a difference between the thermal paste you use in your system, and if there is, which are the best brands and which are the best brands at what price as well. Because obviously, price is always an issue when you're buying anything. So, Number one, I just want to go through a few basics for thermal testing. Now, this is true for pretty much any video you're going to watch out there. What's important that you know with thermal test testing is that it's only good, the absolute numbers are only good for the exact system that it was tested on. What that means is that what's important in the graphs we're going to look at is not that there was a three degree difference, for example, between paste A and paste B. It's that there was a difference. Because what that means is that on my system, it could be a three degree difference, but on a system that generates more heat, maybe it would be a five to six degree difference. Because in case you didn't know, basically ter thermal generation is not a linear relationship. My CPU at 50 to 60 degrees might have generated like a three deg degree difference between two pastes. But if a CPU would be generating 80 degrees, let's say of heat, the same two pastes will have a wider uh, spread between the two of them, like maybe five or six degrees, because basically, without going into a thermodynamics course, temperature generation is not a linear graph. Now, what's important that you know as well is we're gonna go through right now what the methodology I used to compare these pastes. So number one, we used my uh, Ryzen 3 1200 test bench system, which is an open air test bench. It was overclocked to 3.9 gigahertz using 1.3 volts. And uh, we used the Pure Rock Slim uh, cooler basically for the comparisons. Why? Number one, the cooler is one of the easiest to install since we had to do 12 different thermal pastes. Number two, the cooler is one of the easiest to clean because basically uh, you have a nickel uh, flat base, uh, base plate on it, which is really easy to clean. And finally as well, I wanted a cooler that wasn't too powerful because as I said later, I wanted some heat generated. So I wanted to make sure that my CPU was running somewhat hot to see if there was an actual difference between the pastes. So. Now that we have a methodology out of the way, let's take a quick look at the pastes we used. And by the way, the first manufacturer, I'm probably gonna murder the pronunciation of the, the name uh, because it's a Chinese brand, but uh, I'm gonna give it my best shot. So I'm gonna flash up an image of each one on the screen, a close up so that you guys can see exactly what pastes they are. The first two are the most interesting ones because these are the sort of budget brands you buy on Amazon or eBay. Uh, it's, it's by a Chinese co company called Hanzaiyi, H-A-L-N-Z-I-Y-E. And I picked up one, this is the, thir the 30 gram pastes, basically, like you see these everywhere on Amazon. It's like 30 grams for between 5 to 10 bucks. And uh, this one is uh, the HY710. And the second sample I got is the uh, brand from, is the, ver I got it from eBay basically. Now this is a 99 cent tube. It took me two months to get, but it was only 99 cents. And this is the HY810 by the same manufacturer. Now, um, what's important you know is I checked out their website. Theoretically, the HY810 uh, is their highest end and it's followed just by the HY710 and it goes all the way down to I think 310. So basically it's supposed to be the two highest end uh, thermal pastes they make. After that from Arctic we have the MX4 which is their high end brand um, which is also what I use normally in all my builds for the moment. As well as after that, we have some Arctic MX2, which is their entry level brand. So we're gonna see within the same manufacturer, is there actually quite a gap between different pastes? After that, we have the tried and tested and true Arctic Silver 5, which is one of the most well-known pastes worldwide. And I would say was the go-to for system builders for quite a few years. From CryoRig, we have the CP15. Now I was disappointed because this is not actually this is actually their entry level paste. It's not their high end paste. Unfortunately, where I live, uh, it's the only one I could actually get my hands on at a decent price. However, in a future video, when I do get my hands on CP uh, CP5, which is their high end paste, I'll be adding it to the graphs and we'll be doing a follow up videos when I do get my hands on more thermal pastes. 
After that, we have some Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut, which is the high-end brand from Thermal Grizzly. And Thermal Grizzly in itself is supposed to be the best thermal paste on the market, or at least is marketed that way. Uh, after that, we have Thermal Take TG8, which is the high-end brand from Thermal Take. We have also from Noctua the NTH1. From Cooler Master, we have the Master Gel Maker Nano, which is their high-end paste. From Deep Cool, we have the Z9, which is once again their high-end paste. They do make uh, some other but more budget pastes, but this is theoretically their overclocking paste. And lastly, we have another budget brand from uh, Amazon. This is one of the other ones that pop up. It always like pops up first when you type in thermal paste or when you type in uh, components or whatnot. It's the StarTech GR500. So basically we compared all these pastes together. And what's also important that you know is I followed whatever instructions the manufacturer gave for the pastes for installation. Mean that, for example, for Arctic, MA, Arctic Silver 5, they recommended 200 hours of uh, burn-in or curing time. Well, I gave it the 200 hours of curing time before doing the thermal tests. If some paste came with spreaders, I used spreaders. So basically, I gave each paste, paste the best chance to perform at its maximum performance based on what the manufacturer recommends for it. So... Without further ado, let's take a look at the numbers because I think that's what you all you guys are here for and I think we've explained enough to see how we got comparing these pastes. So, chart should be on the screen right now. If we look at the top performers, I'm not going to read out the whole chart for you. You can take a couple of seconds, but we're going to look at a couple of the outliners. So, obviously, the b between the worst and the best paste, there's a four degree difference. To you guys, it might not seem like a lot, but to me, it sounds like a lot. Because 4 degrees, honestly, is the difference between the Pure Rock Slim and slapping a Hyper Evo 212 on your system. So if you're going to be putting a high-end cooler, you're going to need a high-end paste. Because if not, you're going to be downgrading almost as if you installed a cheaper cooler on your system. So, number one, the question that this graph answers is that yes, there is a difference, and yes, it is important to have a decent thermal paste. Secondly, the top performers were Thermal, Cry thermal Grizzly Cryonaut, we had Deep Cool Z9, and we actually, it was also tied with the Cooler Master Maker Nano. Uh, secondly, at 29 degrees, so that this is delta temperatures, by the way, so these are above ambient so that doesn't mean that the cpu was running at 28 degrees it means it was running at 28 degrees above ambient which in my case is somewhere in the uh, high 40s to low 50s um after that so at 29 like i said we have arctic mx4 arctic silver 5 and noctua nh1 as well as the hall za uh, 810 which was the big surprise from this graph now the rest of it Give you a few more seconds take a look at it if there's any thermal paste you're looking you can see where it showed up on the graph and then we'll come back to a conclusion so that you guys you know see what i made of these numbers and what we can sort of take from this testing so now that we've looked over all the numbers and we get an idea of where the pastes are let's pull out the top paste so let's see everyone that was at 28 we have the thermal grizzly we have Deep Cool, and we also have Cooler Master Maker, Master Gel Maker. So basically, these three thermal pastes compare the same. What's not the same though is the price. Thermal Grizzly cost me like seventeen dollars for one gram. Master Gel Maker cost me twenty dollars for four grams, and Deep Cool was ten bucks for four grams. What that means is that overall, the Deep Cool is performing as well as these two other pastes. And it's at, you know, in the case of Thermal Grizzly, when you consider that it's only one gram for $17, this is like a quarter of the price, and it's half the price of the Master Gel Maker. So if you want the best performance for price out of all these pastes, and probably about out of most of the pastes on the market, the Deep Cool Z9 is probably what you should go for. However, if you want the really, really awesome moneymaker in all of this, 
I would say it's the HY810. Now this was honestly what surprised me the most out of all the testing, it's that the 99 cent paste from Amazon, from eBay, even though it takes you like a month or two to get, because it comes from China and the shipping is awful over there, uh, actually performed almost as, almost like one degree above the best thermal pastes, which means that overall, yes, if you're rolling a higher system with higher temperatures, maybe it'll be like three, four degrees, but overall, for 99 cents, you're getting really decent performance, equivalent to the Arctic MX4, which is what I use, which is 10 bucks a, a, in 10 bucks a tube, and it's the same volume. I mean, this was the big surprise of this whole video. So basically, if you want the best overall for the price, I would go with the Deepcool Z9. If you're looking for just like incredible price for performance, the HY810 is really not going to disappoint you. The one thing I would stay away though from is the HY710. There's such a huge difference in the uh, viscosity of the two pastes. This thing was a nightmare to clean off the system. Like it's so liquidy that basically when you try to clean it off, there's like no way not to drop some on the motherboard because basically it's so liquidy that it runs off the sides as soon as you try to wipe it off. So if you want a recommendation, I would stay away from this stuff. I mean, theoretically it is cheaper because it's like 30 grams, I think for not even, it's not even cheaper, but I mean, it's, it's sort of, you know, you get a huge tube, you have enough for like, what, like a hundred builds in this and you, you know, you never have to buy another, another tube unless you're a system builder. But I would stay away from this stuff just because honestly, it was like a nightmare. And I was scared that I was gonna short the board because, you know, I trust most of the thermal paste to not be ther not be electric conductive, but you know, with with a cheap paste like this, I was really worried a bit. Overall, everything turned out well, so I can't say that it damaged the system in any way. But like, save yourself the trouble, I would say. So, I hope you guys appreciate it because I know that when I was building systems, I asked myself for a long time if there was actually a difference between what thermal paste I should buy. And was it really worth to spend like, you know, $17 on a one gram tube to really get the top performance out of anything? Overall, I think we answered the question today that there is a difference between the thermal pastes. However, it's not necessarily price that's going to decide what's best. And that overall, well, we've looked at most of the major brands out there. And like I said, anyway, there will be follow up videos. So as usual, I hope you guys liked the video. Drop me a like if you liked it. Drop me, a, please subscribe if you haven't already. It really helps the channel a lot. I'm going to, I'm going to link uh, the Amazon and Newegg uh, links to uh, the top thermal paste that we looked at today. Uh, so if you want to buy any of the thermal pastes, if you go through the links down below, it doesn't cost you anything extra. It helps the channel out. Patreon link is going to be down there as usual. And, you know, I hope you guys will see, I'll see you all you guys in my next video.